All right, folks, you may know him as Agent Sidwell, but he's also on a great show uh, called The Last Ship. We're going to talk about that. Of course, we cannot uh, get away from talking about Captain America, it seems, right now, so we're going to fit him in. Welcome, Maximiliano Hernandez. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Doing very good. Can we call you Max? Is that what Mama calls you? Mama call you Max? Absolutely. You, you can call me Max. It's a lot easier on the on the uh, syllables. <laughs> Especially for us down in the South. <laughs> Max, uh, what a great role having, uh, you will go down in history. No one's going to forget Agent Sitwell now. And, uh, folks, if you're, if you have not seen Captain America, the Winter Soldier, if you haven't seen the latest on Agent's Marvel Shield, you probably just want to come back to this interview in a couple days because I don't want to be handcuffed by all the spoiler alerts because, oh man, this is good stuff. I tell you what, as a fanboy, yeah. as growing up as a fanboy, and a, you're a comic book guy too, right? I am a, I'm a big uh, comic book guy. I still have a span, I have a subscription right now to Indestructible Hulk. I've had it for years and years. Oh, and now it's Indestructible Hulk. Yeah. So, but Hulk is my Hulk is without a doubt my favorite. So, so if you had to be an Avenger, you're Hulk. I'm a Hulk dude. I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Hulk guy. I've always been. I mean, growing up watching the, the the Bill Bixby show, and you know, I was it was I was just always sort of drawn to that character. I think it's a great character. So how on earth could you have contained yourself when you got the role to be Agent Sidwell? <laughs> I didn't. I, I jumped around. There I, you I go. Totally All right. Around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, a, 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 a good friend of mine was, uh, was she was the casting, um, was casting the, she cast Iron Man and she cast Thor and she cast, um, uh, you know, the, the, the early part of Marvel, working with Marvel when they were like getting everything up off the ground. She's a, she's an LVP at Disney, uh, casting at Biz, Disney, and she uh, actually cast me. Uh, I met her in New York, and she cast me in a film called Pride and Glory that I did with uh, Edward Norton and Colin Farrell and John Voight. And uh, she knew I was a comic book geek, and she said, "Hey, I'm some casting something for Marvel. It's for, and there's a character that I want you to come in and read for named Jasper. Uh, she said called Agent Sitwell, and I was like, Jasper Sitwell." And she was like, uh, yeah. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, uh, uh, of course. I'm going to go and read for Jasper Sitwell. And, and, then I was like, and then I told her, I said, you know I look nothing like the comic Jasper Sitwell. And she was like, no, no. She's like, it's, it's uh, you know, Ken Branagh's directing. He's, you know, they want a different look. They want a different take. And, you know, they just want something new. She probably and didn't know who Jasper to... was without the footnote. Yeah, Here yeah. you are, quoting no, no, the comic no, book. No, like, no, nobody's no, that, business. That, that, <laughs> no, that's the one thing about my friend. She she's very well informed, and she'll know everything that she needs to know. Even though she's not a you know like a fan girl, she's like not, that's not her world. But she's very well informed, and she they had when I went in for the audition, there were pictures of Jasper Sitwell up, and I just started laughing because I was like nothing. I look nothing like him. Yeah, you don't. Uh, and, well she la- and, and she laughed too, and um, mm-hmm. she said, "No, come on in and and read for it." So I read for it. And then she, uh, it was pretty much the same day. She's like, you know, kind of saw it. He really liked what you did. And, you know, you, you're going to be just as it will. And got, that's basically, that's kind of how it happened. You got the little spin off there with item 47. And I, and I tracked that in an interview. And, Stephen got it for and me. The and the consultant. Yeah. And the, yeah. the consultant was the first one. After Thor, we did the consultant. Right. And, and, and then we. And then I got, I got then, Max on tape saying, no one ever dies in the Marvel Universe. Oh, oh! <laughs> no one, no one. But you know what? No one, no one ever dies in the Marvel universe. Uh, um, you know, I mean, to, you look at. I mean, Coulson is alive and kicking. That's true. That's and, true. We uh, may not have seen the last. I mean, uh, the last time I saw him, you know, before the show, he had been run through with an Asgardian spear. So you know, uh, that was he was pretty dead. <laughs> so, um, I mean, you know, no one really dies in the Marvel universe. It's it's all story based and it's all plot based so you know you never know where if Jasper Sitwell pops up again in what fashion or whether or not you know what you saw was a real Sitwell well and you know growing up in comic books you know the folklore was forever growing up um, only Bucky stays dead and of course we once we broke that barrier there are no rules so Jasper could be back yeah absolutely there are a lot of different things there are clones there are life model decoys there are Plenty of things in the in. Marvel yeah, universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are plenty of things in the Marvel universe. You know, I mean, to me, it seems like a. You know, it, to me, it seems you know Nick Fury was pretty torn up at the loss of of Coulson. So maybe he didn't want to go through something like that again, or losing his top agent. So who knows? Who knows? Who, who, who knows who died? When you um, read for 
I, the, the the Winter Soldier scene. You, you've got all this piece together. Do you kind of like have a little bit of a cringe inside, like, oh man, I don't I don't want to be that guy, or do you just yeah, like, oh yeah. man, this is kind of a cool dimension? Yeah, well, you know what? I I I started off that way, like, what is this? What's going on here? No, they, and then you know, I'm reading and I read the scene with uh, Senator Stern, and that's when it's like real, like, oh oh. Okay, and then I'm thinking, oh my God, the fanboys are going to lose it when he says that, when he says Hail Hydra. I was like, they're going to really be like, oh my God, this really does go all the way to the top, you know? And um, so I, I bit, I, there was a bit of a cringe at the beginning, and then I was like, what a cool element, because this is something that people are not going to be expecting. Um, they're going to think it's like outside forces, and the fact that it's all sort of inside forces, you know, uh, pushing all the buttons, um, is a, 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 just a great thing to do because it's like it forces you to rip shield apart. It forces you to, to you know like rip off the mask and look in the face. And and I think that's a great thing. So at first it, it, I was a little you know it was a little oh I don't want to be Hydra. But then I was like you know what these they're so far ahead. This is the thing about Marvel. It's so far ahead. Their their stories are so far ahead. They're thinking like you know in terms of a decade ahead. It's um, longer. It's longer than that, brother. We just posted the story. They're out till two thousand twenty eight. You know, I mean, Kevin, it, Kevin, it, Kevin came clean and told us that's what's on the whiteboard, man. So I mean, Ke- yeah, oh, hey. does it. When, it, when it comes to Kevin Feige, when it comes to Luis Esposito, when it comes to Victoria Alonso and everyone else involved, it's they're so they're so well they're so well put together, they're so well oiled. But not only that, they're so genuinely, really excited about everything. They are the most. They are so like it's like I've never met studio heads that are so like, so gung-ho, so like, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome. And they, that's how they talk to you. That's, like, that's awesome. how they talk to you. It's not like any, like, oh, well, yes, we're hoping that the fourth quarter picks up. It's nothing. There's nothing like that. They could care less about that stuff. They're all so story-driven. I mean, obviously, they want everything to be a success with their studio, but they're so story-driven and plot-driven, and they're, and everything for them is like, isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? Isn't this cool? Over and over again. So it's pretty exciting to, to be involved in stuff like that. And, they're, uh, again, they're so far ahead of what you're thinking about. We're, we're thinking about, like, people are like, thinking about, like, you know, like, what's happening at the end, or, like, what's what's the fourth film in the Phase 3, and they don't care about that. They're so far ahead already. They're like, okay, you guys think about that stuff. We're thinking about the decade after that, you know? Right, like, right. How far ahead is it going to be? They've, they've got about 80 years of Marvel. Um, characters, characters that can be brought back that were sort of franchised out or licensed out to other companies, so they've got a lot on their plate. Um and I think their their the their use of the T V show has been amazing, like how it connects to the movies like directly and how it goes back and forth. And even like my character right now is I think he's it's the record for the playing the most the character the most times in on both T V and films. Um you know, I think it's like eight appearances by this character back and forth, television and film. Um in Marvel an independent Marvel project. So it's it's you know they have forethought. They're, they're putting it all together. And, it's so uh, it's, 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 really it's, it's so well done. I, I don't even know where to begin. It is. It's real, isn't it fun? Isn't it well, fun? It, you know, you know I, I wasn't. I'm not even totally like I wasn't really even totally sold on Agents of Shield. I mean, I really was enjoying it. I love the cameos, and I really like it. But you know, there's times where it kind of felt tedious, and I'm kind of like, man, yeah. come on, don't don't do this to me, man. I, I really want to love. And then this yeah, last yeah. episode, man, the whole world gets turned upside down. If you've seen yeah. Captain America, you're like, oh, this is some of the most brilliant TV to thread yeah. to yeah. thread so much depth together with yeah, both things absolutely. happening simultaneously. And of course, I have to ask, is the Sitwell line, you know, I got a boat to catch, did that come along later, early? I mean, at what point in the phase does that come? Who, who comes in the room and goes, hey, listen, you got to make sure this is the dialogue. So the fanboys fan, well, the fan go crazy. I mean, I, I had already shot Cap yeah, at yeah. that point. Yeah, I had already shot Cap at that point. It was, um, it was that came much later, but I, I guess they were weaving their way because, I mean, obviously the, rip, the repercussions is S.H.I.E.L.D. can no longer exist the way S.H.I.E.L.D. existed. Um, you know what I mean? So I think it, it turned into how do we sew all this together. Yep. Um, and, and then they have, you know, you know, I mean, because Josh is, is executive producer on it and, you know, and Jeff Lowe, I mean, they, they're, they're, they have constant communication with Marvel studio to like, just keep everything, as you can tell, all sort of sewn together. 
Um, so I think they, they needed something to, you know, I think that's a great, the great line. Like, I got, I got a boat to catch. You know what I mean? And then, like, the next, the opening scene of Captain America is the boat. Oh, the you know? fanboys went crazy. They went, I know. And what's funny, making, like, reading the script and doing and shooting all this stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm good friends, actually, too. I'm, I'm friends with Frank Grillo, who plays Crossbones. Um, this is actually our third movie that we've done together. The first one we did was Pride and Glory. The second was Warrior. And this is the third film. Uh, that we've both been in the film together. And it's so funny because he and I, like, we've gone through our, you know, the, the, the productions of other things, and then we look at each other like, and, and I've already worked with Marvel, and he's, and he's looking at me like, this is crazy. This is just crazy. I'm like, I know, brother, get, get ready. It's going to be so much it, 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 fun. It, it, and it's fun, right? I mean, first off, you got to drop, oh yeah. you, you drop my name to Frank and get me hooked up because I keep chasing Frank down. He's always got too much going on. Say, so, listen, take off 15 Frank minutes is, and talk to me. Talk I, to this crazy I, guy I'm in Florida, trying, man. I, I, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to, to take Frank's, uh, um, Frank's role as the hardest working guy in show business. Phew, he's he, got, he's I got so I, much stuff going on. I thought I had, I, I'm, on, I'm on two television shows right now. And I, I know. I thought that was a... You know, and so now I'm like, okay, um, you know, now I'm I'm looking for a third and another movie just so I can be like, I'm, well, I'm working more than Frank Grillo is. <laughs> That's my That's only it, reason. That's my only reason to say it. But, um, yeah, so it, it's, you know, for us it's amazing to be involved in something like this, you know, um, because it's, it's it not only is it so much fun, but it's like the fanboys directly connect to it. Like, I was very lucky because, you know, I, I know there was some, like, some backlash to, to Idris being cast as Hemdal. And I was like, that's, the, you know, retarded. But then the other side of it, people were, like, exploding, saying this is the coolest thing. And, and it's great. His reaction as Brock Rumlow was great. People really, yeah. you, know, you know, really took to it because they were like, you know what? He's a good, perfect, you know, kind of guy for it. And I, I can't wait with they, to see what they do with him next. And they um, did a good job. They, 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 did, they did a great job with uh, pushing really close, and then they kind of let yeah. off the gas a little bit so you want more. Yeah. Instead of spoon exactly. feeding, like the normal Hollywood thing would be, you know, he's on the table and he puts on the uniform. And, no, we don't, we don't need all that. Marv Marvel's too smart for that. Let's just chill yeah, that just, out for a minute. Just knowing that, just knowing he was pulled from the rubble, right. lets you know, okay. You know, right. Well, in George, George's role, George St. Pierre, he plays another character as well. Yeah. We, we know he's yeah. still out there. That's the brilliance yeah. of Marvel. Absolutely. Yeah, and what's funny, I don't know if, you, if you've if you noticed, but in that scene where he's revealed that he had been captured and he's being interrogated, the two guys interrogating him are the writers of Captain America Winter Soldier. The Russos, <laughs> yeah. Stephen McFeely yep. and, Chris, and, and, and Chris Marcus. They're, they're oh, the guys, uh, McFeely and Marcus. They're, they're the ones in, you just see them, and it's so funny because I didn't notice it the first time I saw it, and then I, then I did, and now I, it's, that cracks me up, and what's written on... Um, Fury's uh, um, uh, tombstone cracks me up. Yep. Um, it's, yep. There's a few little things like that in the movie that I think are just, you know, hilarious. That, you know, it's, 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 um, it's fun when the people making the movie make it fun because they want to laugh and they want to have a good time too. And I think that's, that's, the, that's a, that it's awesome about the, working on these movies. You know, it's absolutely, it's, it just feels, you feel like, you know, this is not just work. It's like, we're going to have fun. We're really going to have a lot of fun doing this. So it's exciting. Well, we're talking to Max Fernandez, and we're going to have to shift gears a little bit. And I know you may be on the clock here, but that's all right. We'll see if we can squeeze a little bit more conversation. Because I haven't had a chance to watch it, know much about it. But The Last Ship is right on my alley, man. I love these apocalyptic shows, mm -hmm. uh, another pandemic yeah. outbreak. So you're Doc yeah. Rios, man. Tell everybody a little bit about what's going on with this great show. Well, this is a really – this is um, from, from Michael Bay. Uh, it's a show called The Last Ship. And – the, the break, what basically happens is um, 80% of the world is wiped out by a global pandemic. And we are the last naval, we are the last um, naval, we're the last ship in the, in the naval flotilla. And um, we were, the reason we are uh, sort of like um, saved from this whole thing is we were uh, under radio silence for four months um, doing scientific experiments in Antarctica. And as part of the crew, we had two scientists aboard running tests. We weren't, it wasn't really clear what the tests were. Uh, and then when we come out of radio silence and we log back on, there's no one on the other line. There's no more president. There's no more command structure. Basically, the world doesn't exist the way it was when we left. And that's because this disease uh, has taken over the Earth. Um, we then find out that the um, scientists on board our ship were actually trying to find a cure, and it was so classified that they could not let us know. 
So there, there's, there's definitely feelings of like uh, animosity from the crew because no one was able to contact their family to be like, you know, get somewhere safe. You know, don't come in contact with people. There was no pre-thought. There was no, there was no, uh, like we couldn't, we couldn't warn anyone. So there's definitely elements of that on the ship, but what the show really does and, 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 um, I guess it's like probably one of the big successes also of like a show like Walking Dead, which I am a huge fan of, is how does isolation affect the human condition? How does, how do people, what do people do when they're pushed to the brink? How do they react? Do they, do they band together or they, do they fall apart? So there's, there's elements of that in the show, very strong elements of that throughout the show. And I play the ship's doc, I play the corpsman, I play, uh, I'm a chief petty officer. I play, um, I play the corn, which is the, basically the doctors, the ship's doctor. Um, uh, Rona Mitra, Sam Spruill play the scientists on the ship. Eric Dane is our captain. Um, Adam Baldwin is the XO. Um, and just a really great cast. Charles Parnell plays our, uh, our master chief on the ship. Really great actors. A lot of new actors that no one's ever seen, which is great because there, some of them are newly graduated Juilliard, newly graduated Yale, newly graduated Harvard. These are kids who literally have never been in front of a camera, uh, and they excel. They really do. They really step up. There's a lot of kids here that, that like, you know, we were, at, it's like as, as some of, like, as myself and a couple of the other, Charles Barnell were like sort of journeyman actors. They're like asking us questions, like, what does rack focus mean and what does all this stuff mean? And we're like telling them as we're doing the show, which is great. And, but they just bring a fresh, clean energy to play that sort of like young recruit, that young enlisted person that may, maybe would have, you know, joined up right after high school. And now they're on this ship and now they're thrown into this environment where they are, you know, like meant to say, look, we know you signed up to help your country, but now it's like you're really going to help the world. So it's a, it's a really exciting show. It starts airing in June on TNT. But you said you saw the, the, the pilot. Yeah, yeah, got a little screen, little taste. No, it's good stuff. Don't want to miss out on that. Right. You guys know how much we talk about Walking Dead, Revolution, Jericho, and all that. And this is going to be up your alley if you this like that is, sort you know of what, stuff. That, that, that is definitely right up the say. It's got that same feel as those shows. And being that it's Michael Bay, there's a lot of explosions, a lot of real stuff. We shot on an active naval ship, this, an actual naval destroyer. Uh, in San Diego, so they, like the when, when we're out there, when you see stuff exterior on that ship, that's a real ship. Awesome. A lot of our background are real naval guys. Um, the Navy is very heavily involved in the production in terms of like making sure everything is right, and you know we really make a, a concerted effort to that the, that the, the language, the verbiage we use, the way we communicate with one another on ship. Um, is is right and on point, and I think um, anyone who's ever been in the Navy is going to love this show, and if you've never been in the Navy, you're going to be awed by just, you know, you start thinking about the responsibility that a lot of these young men and women have, um, and it's pretty it's pretty imp- impressive, and it's a, it's a really, I'm very proud, I'm very proud we're, 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 we're done, uh, we've wrapped the season, so you people are going to watch it pretty much like a straight run um, before there's a season two, so uh, I'm very, very excited. So yeah, I think it's, it's very pretty, busy for me right now. Yeah, I think it's like ten, straight, ten straight episodes, right? Yeah, so it's gonna be. Yeah, good. It's ten, I'm not. I'm not in. I'm not in the. You're in about half, right? I'm, yeah, you're in about I'm half. I'm in episode. I'm no. I'm in episode two and on. Okay. I'm in. I believe I'm in eight out of the ten episodes. Okay. All right. We're not keeping you too long, right? Not at all. No. All right. Good. So let's hear about this other show. You got. Listen, Max is busy. We gotta get out there and support I'm the man. Busy. Good stuff. I, gotta pay yeah, the bills. I, what else is I'm Max in? Currently. Uh, I am currently uh, shooting a new show now that I'm very, very excited uh, about. It's going to be on Amazon Prime. Uh, it's a show called Hand of God with Ron Perlman and Andre Royal from The Wire. He played Bubbles on The Wire. Um, and Dana Delaney and myself uh, and Garrett Dillahunt is on it as well. He's excellent. Um, and it's, uh, it takes place in a small town in uh, sort of like Central Coast, um, California. Um, a town that seems, you know, kind of sleepy. You find out it's got like a little corrupt side to it. And um, Ron Perlman plays a judge, a very powerful judge whose family, whose family is the founding of uh, the founders of this town uh, called San Vicente. And in this town, a crime occurs that involves his son and his son's wife. And um, it, it kind of pushes his son to um, try to kill himself. And it drives the judge to madness. 
and it's basically he starts hearing the voice of his son um, uh, in his head, and he doesn't know if it's real or not. But uh, it's it's he's trying to find justice for what happened to his son and his daughter-in-law, and how he starts bending the laws that he's supposed to enforce, and how he takes uh, solace in sort of like a manufactured religion in order to um, to almost deem himself as a Solomon. And he's trying to find justice for his son, but he, he takes it a little too far. Wow. And uh, I play the chief of police on the show. Andre Royal plays the mayor, and Ron Perlman plays the judge. So the three of us are sort of like in, you know, swirled up, you know, caught up in this, uh, in this, um, these, these events that start happening in the town. It's really, really powerful stuff. Mark Forrester uh, is directing. He directed World War Z. Oh yeah. Uh, he directed. He's he's an amazing director. Just I was. I think, so, he, I think he wanted to do this because that's why he uh, passed on the sequel. He's just, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I got to get involved um, with the End of God project. He is, he is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. The show it is really, we just, we actually just begun shooting this week. This is our first week. This is going to be our first, tomorrow is going to be our first full week of shooting um, out of within three weeks. And it's, uh, it's really intense. Dana Delaney is, plays Ron Perlman's wife. Uh, and it's just brilliant because it's a very sort of Lady Macbeth type character who is, uh, you know, someone who is not only married to power, but likes to wield the power as well. Uh, written beautifully by uh, Ben Watkins, um, who, you know, he's been around for a little bit writing too, so it's, like, it's, it's nice to, to have veteran writer, you know, veteran, uh, you know, uh, director, and just people who are handling re- really well. And it's, again, you know, just a, a project that I actually sought out to be a part of. You know, this wasn't just me, like, auditioning. for the, uh, This was me, like, saying, calling my agent saying, there's this project called Hand of God. I just read the script, um, and I need, to, um, I need to be a part of it. And, you know, we made it, we made it happen. That and the fact that Andre Royo is my best friend. So <laughs> I was like, we've known each other for 20 years, and we, he and I, we started doing theater in New York 20 years ago, and we've never worked together on television. So I was like, all right, this is a perfect opportunity. I want to do this project. I'm coming off a cap. I'm coming off a last ship. I'm coming off another movie that I had at Sundance. Uh, you know, I'm like, I want to do this show too. So we kind of pushed for it, and I got in, you know, the room and just did what I had to do, and I'm very, very excited about the project. There's a lot of, lot of twists and turns in this show in particular. Uh, Last Ship has tons of twists, twists and turns, and this show is, you know, without a doubt. And I think Amazon, uh, like Netflix and like Hulu, you know, they're starting to really handle these original programs really well. I think well, they, they, they're, they're starting to, they're, 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 t- they're tapped in. I think they're uh, tapped into the market perfectly. Well, they're not playing around. I mean, you're going toe to toe with Ron Perlman. They're bringing in Dana Delaney and yourself, and you know they're not going to go into this halfway. I mean, this is a great, great time to be a fan of television right now because you've got competition breeds success, and you start, you start getting this. You get best writers, you get the best actors, you get good stuff. I mean, look at what HBO's done. Oh my goodness, it's incredible. They it changed the face of television, and now it's, yeah. bled, it's bled over into uh, even some network shows and that kind of thing. It's just just good stuff and, and good to hear you getting such great shows this is fantastic yeah this is yeah this is a it's a really good time it's a very positive time for me because you know i i am a, and i tell this to people a lot of times i'm like i'm a i'm like a middle class blue collar actor like to me you know i i like walking through the street i don't particularly care if people know who i am but i want i like when actors say hey man i saw you do that thing that was great. And I can say, hey, brother, I saw you in this that picture. I got to tell you, you were fantastic. To me, that means when, my, when, 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 when peers and people when, who work in the business with me come up to me and say, hey, I love that, it, that's what really, that's what really reps my motor. That's what really says, you know what, that then I feel like the choices that I've made, the, 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 the auditions that I've maybe turned down because I felt like it wasn't what was, would feed my career in a positive way. You know, it, it, that that's what gets me going because there are a lot of things that are out there that I just, I honestly just don't go in on. I could just, I say, you know what, this is either not, you know, positive for me at, in terms of like feeding me creatively, uh, or it's just not positive for me for for the like the way that I like the world to see how I work or what I do. You know, so you know, and for me, that that's the main thing. I read that project. Um, I read a Hand of God. Um, and I was like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you know, I gotta be in this. And there's a lot of actors too. I'm, I'm very blessed. I'm very fortunate that, um, you know, the other actors read the same thing too and said, I need to be part of this thing too. So I'm very lucky to be, uh, in this cast. 
And and then I have another movie, a movie that was a, I, if I could talk about it a little bit. I, I did a film, um, film, film, film. This, yep. a film called um, there's a, a film called um, Imperial Dreams that I shot. Really, really, really small budget, about three million dollar budget um, indie film that had gone through Sundance and is um, now out in the world, and uh, it, it, hopefully it'll get some distribution. Um, John Boyega, who's now, um, who's in our movie called Attack the Block. Yes. Um, and so he was the lead in Attack the Block, and now he's doing the, uh, the Jesse Owens biopic. Um, he is the lead. Uh, I'm in the film. Um, Sufi, um, Sufi Bradshaw, who's on Veep, plays my partner. I play a detective, and she plays my partner. And it's just basically about a guy just trying to get up from under being involved with gangs in, in Los Angeles, in Watts. And we shot the whole thing in Watts, on location, in, like, the projects. And it won uh, its category at, at Sundance. It was in the next category. Uh, and it's just a great, great film. And I hope people will, um, you know, give it a little bit, of, give it some love and, 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 and attempt to check it out. It's really powerful. Um, and yeah, so I, it's, it's like, you know, I, the beauty of doing a Captain America is like, I can immediately go and say, you know what, let's do like an indie movie. Let's do something that goes to Sundance. Let's get, let's get behind something that, you know, could, 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 uh, could just feed me differently, you know, yeah. could feed yeah. a different, you know, thing. So I like to do that every so often when you, you know, it's like, because you, do, you know, I've done a lot of studio movies and, you know, and I've never done like a true indie film, like a really like, you know, like, Hey, they can't pay you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But I was like, look, I, and to me, it's always like, look, I, I, it's okay. I just did Captain America. Like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need a paycheck right now, but I want something that just fulfills me creatively. You know, to me, that, that's, that's what the work is about. That's when you get to a place to be able to, you know, do the projects that you want to do. You know, it doesn't always have to be about, you know, doing a $170 million movie. So, um, you know, so that's, so I, I'm, I'm very, I feel very, right now, like there's a great, well of momentum that I'm working with and uh, I feel like I've been surrounded by a lot of positive people that that you know want that to continue so um, yeah I'm very excited it's a very exciting time for me very very exciting time indeed Max stay on the line with us real quick and then uh, Maximiliano Fernandez folks and uh, wow from Agent Sitwell to the last ship to the Amazon uh, Prime show called Hand of God, Imperial Dreams at Sundance. Just an incredible time for him. And uh, uh, God bless you, sir. I love talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.